We'll have 20 riders for 20 laps in our main event. Villapoto and Stewart, as we said, heat race winners. Matt Bonnie, not the LCQ winner. Chad Reed won A1 last year, and he said, Jeff, every time I win at A1, I win a championship. Then he needs to win here tonight. Big, big night. Let's check in one more time. Progressive pre-race report from Aaron Bates. Ryan Villapoto has already made his debut in the Supercross class by winning his heat race. He said he's not satisfied with that yet. There's still the main event to go. He might be the rookie in this class, but he has teammates with the veteran, Tim Ferry. And when I asked Tim Ferry if he had any advice to give the rookie, he said, are you kidding me? He's already won the heat race. He already beat me second in practice. And he said, the only advice I'm going to give that kid is don't eat yellow snow. Looks like Tim Ferry is not going to be giving Brian Villapoto any additional tips. Riders getting their goggles ready. Jeff, this track we've talked about has been pretty good tonight. It has been good because it has allowed the riders to be very aggressive. I don't know whether, it's specifically whether it's the design or that the, the consistency, consistency of the soil. You know, there's some tight sections over here. It's really fast around the first turn in the start area. Bottom line is the gloves are off. These riders are going for it. I know they say it's a marathon, but I'm telling you, every one of these riders on the line wants to win here tonight at A1. This is where you make the statement. Jake Weimer mentioned that in the lights class. Well, you know, Stewart, Reed, Villapota, Wyndham, and the rest are all thinking the same thing about this main event right here. here make your statement right now. He gets the whole shot, but Josh Grant is right there with him on the 33. Reed's third. Chad Reed is on the number one. And Stewart starts to pull away as Grant and Reed stack up in the turn. James Stewart is undefeated so far on this Yamaha. He doesn't want to stop that streak anytime soon. Reed needs to get past Grant. He can't mess around with Grant. He has to get past him, focus on James Stewart, and not let him get away. He did. There he is. He's past him. There he is. The rock star Makita Suzuki rider is now past Grant and sets after Stewart. And Jeff, we saw these two riders go head to head twice last year. Here in Anaheim, where Reed beat Stewart, and then in Phoenix, where Stewart beat Reed and then disappeared due to his knee injury. Stewart makes a mistake. Oh, he sure did. Reed closes the gap. Is this one of the, this, that battle, is this where Reed gets it back? They, Stewart takes it back, like the Bailey Johnson days, the Bailey Ward days. 1986, they say, was the greatest Supercross race of all time. And it took place here. Maybe we're about to see another epic one. Hey, the way that the track is shaped up and just the way that the, that, that feeling that we have in the air here tonight, the excitement of the crowd, we all have the best seat in the house. We are here. Next best seat, live on speed. There it is. And Reed is really making some moves going into the corners. And Stewart getting a great drive out. Look at that triple quad into a main triple. And Reed is matching him. Jeff, he's not having there any problems. to the inside. Here comes Reed up the inside, and we've got a change for the lead. And boy, you can hear the reaction from this packed in behind crowd. And remember, James Stewart is on Reed's bike from last year that he won the championship with. And Reed is riding for the team that Ricky Carmichael beat him with. <laughs> Not too many riders make passes on James Stewart. And Reed absolutely is flying right now. He's got some fantastic lines on the track. That was Mike Gosler. That was Ricky Carmichael's old mechanic, who is now Reed's mechanic. So now is the experience that Suzuki has given Chad Reed with Gosler, the leadership of Roger DeCoster? Here's Is that what he needs? Villapoto had a bad start. He's in ninth. He's battling with Tedesco right now at number nine. Tedesco on the back three Honda. And there's Tim Ferry just in front of him, his teammate. That's Villapoto's teammate. So 
Villapoto trying to pick his way through here. You can see him going double, 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 single there. That is not the fast line. He's going to have to pick it up. Oh, oh no, he's he goes down. down. Now Villapoto's he really is down. He's really got to get going now. Uh-oh, did he? Let's see if this fuel-injected Kawasaki starts quickly. It does. That's one of the advantages now with the three machines that fuel injection is that the that they start very easy compared to the carbureted machine. 450 is notoriously tough to restart once they get hot, but that's the carbureted version. KTM and Yamaha still running the carbureted version. Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Honda all fuel injected now. Here's a replay. You see Villapoto just go in, grab a little too much front brake, some of that loose dirt, and look at the gap that Chad Reed has on James Stewart. Wow. 1.8 seconds at the stride. Jeff that Reed is huge. solid. That is huge. Let's see where it's at now as they come across the line. 1.4, Stewart not done. Josh Grant still holding third for the Joe Gibbs Toyota back Yamaha team. And remember, James Stewart is trained by Alvin Baker, legendary trainer of World Moto, uh, MotoGP champion Nicky Hayden, and of course, Ricky Carmichael. There's the experience Grant. that he brings. There's Grant on the 33. Could you imagine? We talked about how everybody has been saying this Gibbs team has everything they need except for the right riding talent. What a boost this would be for team owner Coy Gibbs and team manager Jeremy Albrecht, if they could pull this off and get on the podium tonight. Well, remember last year, they just had so many problems with the riders, injuries, everything. But now, they in the, in the, uh, in the offseason, when they hired Josh Grant, they said, we're going to give him the chance. We believe in him. And it's been a great, a great offseason with the training and the testing. Jeremy Albrecht and the guys there have been very happy with it. And now they're showing the results here. This is where all the hard work pays off, evidently. They have a good program. And Kevin Windham has bounced back from his heat race. He didn't look very good in the heat. He's running fourth now. And look at Stewart come flying through that section, Jeff. It's tight now. Stewart back on the gas. He's reeling in Chad Reed. Boy, Aaron, Chad Reed looks awful strong, though. Chad Reed definitely does. If you're wondering what happened to him in this heat race, I'd ask him. He got tangled up in the very first corner with his teammate, number 800 of Michael Lessie. Getting his brake lever stuck, or pardon me, his gear stuck in second gear. He wasn't able to get it out of there for quite some time. He said after enough time, he finally was able to push it out. Back Boy, he went. Stewart came flying into that corner, Jeff, and he almost catastrophically crashed. Well, he's doing a triple in, the, in that tight section. And Stewart almost made a huge mistake in turn. He missed the rear brake and just come flying around the turn. Some skill that only James Stewart has to be able to pull off those type of moves. Here he comes back, looking to the inside. Reed knows he's got a battle on his hands, but he's used to fighting with Stewart. He These is. two have become big rivals, and Stewart retakes the lead. By the Anaheim crowd getting into this one. Reed starting to Reed's come right back on him. Through He's the close. sand they go. There's the mechanics area. Cheered him on. And Reed's old mechanic cheers on his rival now. Just incredible. Oh, oh he's down. He's and both down. down. They got together. They're both down. And Stewart's. Stewart is down hard. He's dazed. He's having trouble getting up. Here comes Grant. Grant's going to take the lead away. Stewart is now trying to get to his feet. Here comes Wyndham. Reed is underway. Wyndham goes Wyndham's down. down. Wyndham gets into Stewart. And here goes Short. Stewart just cannot Ferry's figure by. out what to go. Tim Ferry goes by. You can see the Tedesco. eyes of James Stewart. He's, He's struggling. He's trying to find out where is he. Trying to get this fight going and get back in the race. Meanwhile, the positions and the points are slipping away. What a heartbreaking turn of events for James Stewart. He's been undefeated on this Yamaha, and now it won't restart. He's still dazed. James Stewart got hit from behind. Here's the replay, Ralph. You see as they come out of the turn, Reed comes by on the left and clips the back of James Stewart. Watch Stewart smack the ground. Stewart took a very hard hit to the head. Watch here. Watch his body as it goes limp. Focus on Stewart's helmet right here right into the face of that whoop. That is a hard impact. You know what happened? They came out of the turn. Stewart had a slight delay. He slowed up just a second. 
And that's why Reed hit the back of him, took them both down. And he's still out of it. He cannot get that Yamaha to restart. Remember, that's one of the carbureted bikes, Jeff. And we talked about how hard it is to restart the 450s. The carbureted tougher than the fuel injected. Well, and now if we go to the leader, here's another one of the carbureted Yamahas that is performing awesome here tonight from Riverside, California. Josh Grant, one of the local boys in his opening Supercross ride. Remember, he was a light rider last year, is out leading the biggest race of his career. This team lost their sponsor just a few weeks ago. They came into this race with the support of Toyota that they've had in the past in Yamaha, helping them out. The kids team, they said, if we get the right rider, we can do some serious stuff in this series, and they might pull off the biggest win of the season by winning Anaheim 1. <laughs> this is incredible. Did I tell you A1 was going to be up the hook? It always is. It's, it's always incredible. Is. He's got a 10 and a half second lead over Andrew Short, and if Short could finish second, what a huge shot in the arm for the Red Bull Honda team who has been dealing with injuries over the last two years, and they could be on the podium here. Well, short, his short-term goals, his goal for this There's, season. Look at oh. James Stewart, the long, long walk back to the truck. Just incredible. Short, short-term goal, win a race, win my first Supercross main event. He's 11 seconds back on Grant. Grant is absolutely flying right now. Last lap of 102.4, the fastest lap right now. So not only is he leading, but Josh Grant is pulling away. Here is Short. By the way, his Honda stablemate, Kevin Windham, who got also, looked like he was going to get a great advantage with the problems with Reed and Stewart. He got going again, but he's back in 16th. Reed now running in third could be a big points advantage for Reed in this championship. <laughs> Ralph, I have to catch my breath for a second, okay? Well, and Jeff, this they, is say, incredible. they say if you're gonna win the championship, you have to minimize your mistakes. And if Reed can hold on to third here tonight, that's what he's doing, and a big step towards the championship. And it, it would be huge, and keep in mind, Eric, you've got James Stewart? Yeah, guys, James Stewart is obviously extremely upset, probably a little dazed and confused. James, can you tell us what, ha what happened out there? Crash. We know that Chad Reed clipped your back tire. Did you have a slight delay? Yeah, you know, it's not anybody's fault. Just had a bad mistake. Stupid on my part. Racing, racing, guys. This is the battle of a lifetime here at Anaheim 1. Boy, you can see the intensity, just fuming. He's that way because he's put in the work. He yes. has the dedication. He knows he made a slight mistake coming out of that turn. That's team manager Larry Brooks, by the way, a former Supercross star in his own right. And that's Big James, James Stewart's father, talking things over with their star rider. He's very disappointed. Well, now very they got, disappointed they got to get refocused and ready for Chase Field. It's, it's seven days away, hey. and they can't lose any more points. Hey, Ricky, he Carmichael, back the Ricky Carmichael crashed out of the first race. I can't yeah. remember the year. Yeah. Came back to win the championship. It can't be done. Here's Tedesco having a tremendous night of the number nine Honda. He's battling with Reed. Reed trying to hold on for points. Tedesco trying to prove he's back and closing in as well. You see the green machine of Tim Ferry having a great night for Kawasaki factory team running in the top five. His teammate Filipoto back in seventh. So Red Dog. Oh. The old dog putting it down here tonight at A1 with the experience, a solid program that year after year, Timmy Ferry is always there, always comes through the pack. Now he's working his way up to Tedesco, up to possibly Reed for third and a spot on the podium. The thing about Tim Ferry is it doesn't matter where he is at the end of the first turn. He's not, he'll tell you himself, he starts not his best part of his race. But boy, when it comes to fitness and getting through the race, he will he will be there before this thing is done. There's no doubt about it. Reed needs to pick it up. There could possibly be something on the Reed bike that's bent, probably because because that was a pretty hard crash for those guys. Because Reed's off the pace right now. He's a couple seconds off of our leader, Josh Grant, who's just absolutely flying. And you take a look at the box up there, Team yeah. Sam Manuel, Yamaha yeah. guys. The Brain Trust is still discussing it and how they're going to go about practicing this week and getting ready for Chase Field just seven days from today. Boy, the folks in Phoenix are going to see a great one because, you know, James Stewart's going to come out loaded, ready to go. So for Josh Grant, what, oh, what has to be happening going through his mind? This 
is the race of his life. Well, but you still got to finish it. He's got an 11.8 second lead over short. But Jeff, this is Supercross. And just when you think things are in your hands, boy, they can deal you some crazy cards and yank the rug out from underneath you. Well, I'm telling you, as the laps wear on, the nerves will start to set in. That's when he has to fight off. He knows he can do it. Remember I said he can turn as fast as lap out there as anyone. Can he put it together for 20? He's been given a little gift here, okay? But he also is in the position to take advantage of that, to, to win his first Supercross main event in his first attempt. Let's go back and take a look at the progressive direct hold shot replay since we got underway. We'll focus on our champion, number one. He gets out of the gate. Good start, but it was 33. Josh Grant there to the inside, but number seven, James Stewart sneaks by with the progressive hole shot. Great way to start it, but it has not, it has ended in a very sour way for James Stewart. Jeff, in every conversation you and I have had about this season, preparing for this season, we've always talked about the top four, but you and I both have said, Josh Grant's the sleeper in this whole thing. Definitely, he's on a solid team right now. I, it, it was, it, it's his time to, to mature, to step up. This, this is what he's been training his whole life for. This is just an incredible ride that Josh Grant is putting on. Have my fingers crossed for him that he can finish this just over six laps to go. And not just for Josh, but for Coy Gibbs and Jeremy Albrecht. Uh, watch those two guys been over to the shop at Gibbs Racing in Huntersville, North Carolina. Watch Coy Gibbs building pit boxes for the team. Everybody getting involved, getting this program ready to go racing. And here they are, everybody pulling their weight. And they might just steal one away from the biggest names in the sport. The fight here between Tedesco and Ferry continues. Ferry with the advantage right now. Six Tedesco. laps to go. Tedesco putting in a phenomenal ride. He has had some tough times here since he stepped up from being lights champion up into the big boy class. Now, today, tonight, Ivan Tedesco really has put together a solid ride, running fifth place. Has to be happy with that. I told me earlier today, I've done the homework. I'm ready to go. I just got to see if my homework was right. Apparently it was, Jeff. He is really competitive here. And his teammate Millsaps back in 12. Wyndham, another Honda Riders, 15th. And Villapoto, Ferry's teammate, has worked his way up to sixth. Here's Ryan. He won his heat race, Jeff. What does he take away from this if he can finish here in sixth or maybe better it into a top five? Well, it's experience. I, I mean, yeah, look back to 1993 with Jeremy McGrath. In his first two rounds, he did not win. He won his third round in his way, you know, on his way to winning the championship with 10 wins. So you can't win it here tonight, but you sure can lose it, right? Without question. Without question. And even though you might quickly say, well, maybe that's what's happened to James Stewart, don't be too quick to judge that because we do know that the drama and the roller coaster ride that is Supercross. Well, the last year, a perfect example. We all thought Stewart was the guy to beat. Two races in, he was gone. Then we all thought Chad Reed was just going to be handed the championship. And Kevin Windham took him all the way to Vegas before it yes. was said and done. This is a crazy sport that we're in here. And uh, there's just so much that can happen, you know, from the track, the motorcycles, all of the competition that it's just bar to bar racing and the, how the track conditions change. It's, it's so difficult. And, I, this season, there just seems to be a lot of desire. There's not, there's not the, the the feeling that any of the riders are settling into their position. They all want to be up on the podium. They all want to be winning races. We're, we're seeing that tonight with Josh Grant, number 33, Toyota Yamaha, out here leading his first Supercross race of his career. And not a factory team, a factory supported team. A bit of a difference for all intents and purposes. A lot of the factory components that well, everybody else has, but still a bit of a difference. Well, yeah, but and, and keep in mind, the Sam Manuel Yamaha team, the Stuart Rides for is a factory supported team. Um, not quite sure how the you know, part selection and the support is between the two, but Yamaha has always been very generous and open to the idea of teams coming in with their own sponsors and putting more Yamahas on, on the track. And right now, it's uh, definitely working to their advantage. Here's, Here's the replay. a look at what happened between Reed and Stewart. Stewart made a slight mistake. You see a little delay just as he comes out. Reed definitely was not anticipating that. 
then Wyndham right into Stewart as Stewart tried to get off the track. Wow, so unfortunate for Kevin Wyndham too. Stewart wasn't looking to his left. He was trying to get out of the main line. Kevin was going down the left, which definitely was not the main line. Kevin was trying to sneak by. He was trying to get by there before Stewart and, and just caught that right foot peg on the front well, tire. And you could see so James was dazed when he got it. He took a hard shot in his head into the dirt. Wyndham now up to 15. Okay, Ralph. Here's Josh Grant working his way through the lap riders. This is where it gets difficult. Josh Grant just got taken out of his rhythm through that tight tabletop section. Right now, he can't do the rhythm that he wants to through here. Well, yeah, he sure he does. The lap riders have got to get out of the way. A rider like Josh Grant, he's going to be nervous enough trying to finish this thing off with just over two laps to go. Cole Siebler right in front of him on the number 79. Oh, he's got a top block on his... Oh, he sure does. Like it's we on said, the brake side. It's, it's never on the over. Brake side. Now, what is that going to do to him, Jeff? If he loses the rear brake... Oh, that is wrapped around the right side. Oh, oh no. No way. Oh, no. no. Unbelievable. Now, the wheel is still turning. Does he's he have chewing a rear brake? No, no, he does not he have does a rear not. brake. He does not. Now, how does he ride with this? He's got a 12-second lead. He has to go for it. He has to know that he has no rear brake. He cannot let up. How does he compensate for it? What does he, has he do? He has to use the front brake. He's got a good lead. He's got 12 seconds with a lap and a half to go. He Just, has to be very careful going into the turns here. This that, will be incredible if he can pull this off. How does he change his riding style to compensate? Using oh, the right front there, brake. He almost went high. How does, that, how does it make him affect his riding style, Jeff, the way he approaches the turns? He has to only use the front brake. Yes, because he's doubling through here. This is where the 13-second lead and all of those hard laps that Josh Grant put in, en route to this, he's coming up to the white flag. Can he hold on? Boy, look at the smoke pouring off that thing. There's the white flag. What a final lap we've got. Grant with the tough block wrapper. Caught up in that rear wheel. Seven and a half seconds between Grant and Short to the checkered flag. And either one of them looking for their first ever Supercross win. Short just cut Grant's lead in half in one lap. Both Is riders. this going to be enough for Josh Grant to hold on? His mechanic, Alex Ewing, right there, 7.5 gap. This is what you have to keep to the finish. And Andrew Short can smell his first win as well. And he can see the problems in front of him with Grant. Or if he can catch him, he can take the win away. Or Josh Grant is going to pick off one of the most unbelievable victories in Anaheim history. Josh, Josh Grant. Grant goes to the Joe Gibbs racing team. He's celebrating, but he's not there just yet. The checkered flag awaiting. Josh Grant and Joe Gibbs Racing both looking for their first Supercross wins. Here it is, the He's checkered flag. It. An incredible win for Josh Grant and the Joe Gibbs Toyota Yamaha team as they steal one away here in Anaheim 1. An amazing performance by this new team. Can you believe that the California native comes out in his opening Supercross? Defies the odd tough block cover, plastic on the rear brake, and he manages to keep it together for two laps to win his first Supercross. Here's how it happened, Jeff. Jumps right to the inside here and picks it right off of that tough block. And that's because he was dealing with the traffic. Exactly. That's where he had to alter his line. And you see the smoke as the plastic. Oh, and that's the close call. Almost went over the bars. I have never seen anything like this. What a memorable finish. There you see Keith McCarty from Yamaha. There is Josh, the first ever win for the Joe Gibbs Racing Team. Jeremy Albrecht, the team manager who had been with Factory Kawasaki, left that highly coveted position to join Coy Gibbs, moved all the way from Southern California back to North Carolina to get this team going. There's Jeremy right there, nicknamed J-Bone. He can celebrate, no doubt about it. And you're right in there with him. And when we come back, we're going to take you to the podium, and that's going to be a very memorable celebration. Stewart and Reed, they go down, and Josh Grant celebrates with an Anaheim victory.
Get the latest MotoGP news, results, videos, and commentary on the web or on your phone only on SpeedTV.com and Speed Mobile. Look at the tears pouring out of Josh Grant as he has achieved a lifelong dream. We talked about it at the beginning where these men who've become world-class athletes challenge for championships, but their dreams all began as children. And tonight, Josh Grant has fulfilled the dream. The he is a winner, winner in Supercross, and he's a winner at A1, the most prestigious race on the tour. Chad Reed finishes second. Third. All right, I should say third. Andrew Short finishes second, still searching for his first win. Ryan Villapoto debuts with the top five. And Ivan Tedesco back healthy and fast. Michael Lesi battled through to finish 11th. And look at James Stewart in 19. Let's go down to Aaron. I don't know if you could start the season off with any more excitement than that, but a crash and Chad Reed managed to salvage third. Chad, what exactly took place between you and James Stewart? Oh, you know, I felt good as uh, I almost had the whole shot there and some, somebody came right from the outside and I uh, you know, just pushed to the front. I felt really good at the beginning and uh, had some good lines and man, it was, uh, we had perfect conditions out here and passed James and, uh, you know, he uh, you know, got back on me, made a pass back and I don't know, I think he hit neutral or something, but man, we hit hard and, uh, you know, I ended upside down. I saw him down the track upside down. It was a bad deal. So I uh, hope he's all right. and. And, uh, you know, we can get back up there and battle again. But uh, that was a shame. You know, I felt like I had a win in me tonight. And, uh, you know, I lost my front brake in the thing. And it was all twisted. So, uh, you know, just rode the rock star, Makita Suzuki, uh, you know, put her up on the box. Uh, I just want to thank everybody. You know, we've been working our butts off. And we really want to win this championship. We want to show why we got that number one played on. And all the guys at Thor, Parts, Scott, and Bridgestone, it's, uh, it's a good thing. Everybody at home and uh, my docs. You know, in Texas, Dr. Therese, thank you so much, and your family, and, and Dr. Moses in uh, Arizona, thanks. The old saying, you can't win a championship here at Anaheim 1, but you can definitely lose it. What does it mean to you that you salvaged third place? James Stewart is in 19th at this point, moving into Phoenix next weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer. I think, uh, you know, I think the two of us are going to have some battles with, with some younger kids as well. I mean, uh, Josh, Josh just showed that uh, he could pull off a win. I'm proud for him, and sure he got up here. I think that's his best finish yet, and... Man, I just, we just want to go out there and battle. That's what Supercross is all about and, uh, you know, try and stay on the box. I've been here and done this a few times and, and uh, you know, I really want to be consistent and try to get some wins. Congratulations on a job well done tonight. Cheers, thanks. Outstanding performance for Chad Reed. He looks like he's, he, he's, he's, to, he's ready. He's ready. He didn't win tonight, but he's ready. We'll be right back. More interviews to come. Podium celebration continues just underneath the waterfall here in center field. Angel Stadium in Anaheim. Here's the final installment of our Go Green trivia question, which was presented by Kawasaki and a chance for you to win a 32 gigabyte Apple iPod Touch. We asked you, who holds a record for most wins by a rookie in a single Supercross season? Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed, James Stewart, or Jeremy McGrath? The correct answer, hope you got it right, is number four, Jeremy McGrath. Remember, the winner gets a 32 gigabyte Apple iPod Touch. Well, let's go back down to the podium where Aaron has another top flight interview for us. Andrew Short scoring his best Supercross result so far of his career. Andrew, you managed to step it up. Even though it was a little bit of a gift tonight, chaos going all around you, you are ready and you are prepared this season. What are you crediting this to? Uh, you know, I have a new program. Jeff Spencer's been really helping out along with uh, Honda Red Bull Racing. You know, they put together a great program. And I had two awful starts tonight, my heat race in the main. But, uh, you know, I kept looking forward and uh, moving ahead. And it was a great result for me because I passed a, a lot of guys that I, I normally can't get through. So I'm pretty excited with how it went. Okay, only one step left to go. So congratulations on your second place. He's still looking for that first victory. Here's a look at our upcoming schedule. We're all headed over to Phoenix. Be there next Saturday night. Chase Field. As you take a look at our Toyota Moving Forward schedule, you'll see that coverage here on speed. The very next day, Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We race Saturday night, the 9th. You see it here on speed on the 10th. And then we come back to Anaheim, Houston, and San Francisco with our friends at CBS. And of course, all the light shows coming your way on the home of the lights exclusively here on speed.
Well, we got one more interview coming up for you with this guy, Josh Grant. You don't want to miss it. First time winner. I'm sure I'll have some great things to say. This well, the fans are making their way out of Angel Stadium. Getting ready to head to Phoenix, which is where the tour moves next. And we head down to the podium to meet our winner, Josh Grant with Aaron. The tears of joy is said it all. Not only did he take his very first victory, being the rookie coming in tonight, but the first victory for the team as well. Josh, what does this moment mean to you? Oh, I can't even explain it. It's, you know, such a great feeling. It's uh, just like when I won my first lights, you know, race. And I just, I mean, I can't thank those guys enough. Those, they helped me out so much. You know, the Joe Gibbs Racing, Yamaha, Toyota, everyone that's been there for me, Farm Bar U, and, uh, you know, no fear, show it. Just, I, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so excited about the race, and it just, you know, it's uh, been a long time. Hey, take us through what exactly was going through your mind when all of a sudden a couple of laps left to go and a tough block cover gets stuck in your back wheel. Was that a moment of anxiety? Yeah, I, I had no clue. I didn't know what it was. I just thought maybe something was wrong with the bike, but I just, you know, kept charging away and just going for it. So that's all I could do, and I didn't, didn't want to stop. So it was either crash out or, you know, win. So, and luckily, you know, I, you know, got the best of it. Congratulations on playing it smart. Josh Grant, his very first victory. Well, Josh Grant takes a big win here in Anaheim. We head to Phoenix. Jeff, what's your thoughts? Well, my, my thoughts are that we need to expect the unexpected because tonight just blew me away. The action, the action was incredible. Um, we had two first-time winners that we didn't expect. They weren't the favorites who we were talking about coming in. So it's going to be a great Supercross season. It is. We hope you'll join us. We sure hope you've enjoyed our live coverage from the drop of the first gate to the last checker flag here tonight in Anaheim. And now we head off to Phoenix, a different facility a closed roof if they want it or they can open it in, at Chase Field. Yeah, plus the dirt consistency. It's always a little hard, a little loose, they're a little slippery. Not like here where you have to be uh, a little more careful with the throttle control. But, I mean, there's some definite favorites that have something to prove once we get to Phoenix. Okay, so so James Stewart, you know, he's, he's he, he wants to come back. You got Dungey, Lawrence, these guys trying to notch that first win in the lights. So, uh, Phoenix, it's going to be it's going to be incredible once again. How about James Stewart? Now he's he's got to he's got to think about this a little bit. He's got some work ahead of him. Yeah, and and James knows the, that you know he made the mistake on his own. So uh, definitely going to be a tough pill to swallow. But Stewart's a champion, and what does a champion do? He, he does. He goes back to the drawing board, gets reset. He'll work together with his trainer Alden Baker, everyone at the Samuel Yamaha to get focused for the for the next weekend. And he's going to try to do what Ricky Carmichael did after DNFing the first race, and to come back and win the championship. That's James Stewart's new challenge. Yeah, and Reed you now comes out of here with a third place. Some good points. Yeah, but Reed definitely salvaged a good night here. Um, Reed was solid. He was ready to challenge. We were going to have that back and forth uh, pass here, you know, that battle between Reed and Stewart. Um, it just didn't materialize uh, like we wanted it to. Well, let's go back to Aaron for a final thought from her as well. Well, guys, final thought. I don't even know what to say. Absolute mayhem and chaos going down here on the infield. Who would have thought that Josh Grant was going to take the win? That just goes to show you exactly what kind of season that we might be in store for. Chad Reed, good to see him back up and running again. James Stewart, obviously frustrated as we got a final word from him before he had walked off. Kevin Windham, he's very thankful that that tough block was in his way this evening to land on. What a night. Who knows what we're in store for next, but I'm very excited to see what's going to happen next weekend in Phoenix.